Hi everyone, this is Cheryl from Gemstyle. Um, I had a request from one of my subscribers from Sans, San Loves to Scrap. Um, <clears throat> she wanted to know how I did the flaps on my Twilight uh, mini album. And that's this one here. <clears throat> she wanted to know how these flaps were done. Um, I created this book using a tutorial from Kathy Files over at Paper Phenomenon. And <clears throat> I know this, the tutorial for this book was done on Ustream. And Ustream deleted a lot of uh, her tutorials. And it wasn't just her, it was, I believe, anyone who was subscribed to Ustream because they wanted to create space. So the tutorial for this one was deleted. <clears throat> and I know that Kathy is offering um, access to her tutorials from Ustream. Um, for an entire year, you get the back ones, the current ones, as well as any ones that go forth for a year. And I think it's like $29.99. You just have to subscribe and pay for it. And all of that information is over on her blog. But I told, excuse me, I told San Loves to Scrap that I would um, show her how I did it, the tutorial, or just for the flaps. So um, the base page is uh, five and a quarter by seven and three eighths. So this is going to be the base page. Sorry about that. I know I'm moving in. It needs to focus. So five and a quarter by seven and three eighths. So that's the base page. <clears throat> then from there, you're going to make three flaps. And the three flaps that you're going to make, you're going to need a piece of paper that measures five and one eighths by nine and three quarters. And so that's what this is. And then you're going to score it at three quarter of an inch, five, and then nine and a quarter. Okay. And so just for the purpose of doing, doing this tutorial, um, I'm just using regular uh, cardstock and just using different colors so that you guys will be able to see the difference. So um, again, your base page is going to be five and a quarter by seven and three eighths. Then you're going to need three sheets that are cut down to five and one eighths by nine and three quarters. And then you're going to score that at three quarters of an inch five inch and then nine and one quarter and so to save time I've already cut down the majority of the papers so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fold on my score lines and glue what you're gonna need is you're gonna need um, a wet adhesive and I'm using hot glue and then you'll need a dry adhesive and I'm using ATG tape um, so what you do at least this is what I do you guys can score your lines different and fold them different um, not score them different, but you can fold your score lines differently if you want to. What I'm doing is I'm scoring them at the middle fold first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reinforce my score lines with my bone folder. And just make sure they're straight before I reinforce. And then once I do that, then I'm going to take the small um, score line here, which is basically your half an inch. This is the last one that you uh, did when you scored it at uh, nine and a quarter. So the piece that's left, you're just going to fold that away from you. That way, when you fold it, it folds like so. And then you're left with this flap here. This flap, you're going to fold it to the back because what's going to happen is it's going to adhere to the page like this. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and reinforce those score lines that I folded. So that's all I'm doing here. <clears throat> Okay, and so now when you fold it up, this is the way it's going to look. So it's going to be glued here. Your um, ATG tape is going to go here, and then your wet adhesive is going to go here. Okay, and what that does is it'll seal the pocket up and it'll stay permanent, and then your ATG tape will be right here. Um, I also forgot to mention you're going to need another tape and a strong adhesive, and I would recommend using. Um, score tape and that's to adhere these three quarter of an inch flaps down to your base page um, for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to use my ATG tape but I would suggest that you use a strong double-sided adhesive like score tape or red line tape one of those because you don't want this to come up okay so let me go ahead and fold all of my sheets first and then I'll glue them all so again um, what I do is I fold it in the middle <clears throat> excuse me at the middle line and then I fold a small one and again you're folding that one away from you okay and then that way it folds up like so and then you can fold this one away from you flip it over and fold it away from you as well and that way when you glue it down it glues down like this okay and now here's the last one and this one was facing the wrong way when I folded it, but that's okay. 
Let me just fold that one this way. And fold up. There's your flap there. And then you can just flip that like so. And then you reinforce your score lines that way. Okay? So again, this is the way it's going to look. And if it's off a little bit, when you fold it up, just straighten it out. And then line it up. And then just reinforce your scores again. Your score lines again. And that way it'll be straight, okay? So there we go. So these are your three flaps that you have like this. Okay? And so now what you can do is you can go ahead and get ready to glue. So what I recommend is you put your ATG tape here first. And then you're going to put your hot glue or your wet adhesive right here. By putting your ATG tape first, once you put your hot glue, then you can go ahead and adhere it and it'll be fine and it won't dry on you because you got to be fast with the hot glue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place my um, ATG tape on here and I'm just placing it on the flap there. And then this way, there's the ATG tape. I'm going to place the glue here. Now keep in mind that when you get ready to put your hot glue down, make sure that you're putting it on the correct side. If you put it on this side, your flap is this way. I mean, not your flap, but your pocket is going to come out this way, which is going to be the wrong way. In which case, you won't be able to put it down the correct way. You could flip this over this way and then do it that way to make sure that you do, but it just um, it's just a lot cleaner by it being this way. It's not hindering this flap right here. Everything's free and it's tucked going the way that it's supposed to go. So just be careful when you um, put your hot glue down that you're putting it down on the correct side, okay? So all I'm doing is placing my hot glue. And then I'm adhering that down and just putting a little pressure on it to make sure that it seals. And then I will just reinforce that fold that has the ATG um, tape on it. That way you can make sure that one seals properly. And then here's your pocket, okay? Now, I know on the flaps that I have in the book, I do have a notch cut out here. I'm going to adhere the mat first before I cut out the notch. It just makes it a little cleaner. At least to me it does. I'm sorry about the lighting, guys. It is nighttime when I'm filming this. Um, so it is a little dark in my room. And i got to get figure out my lighting because currently it sucks. <laughs> so here we go. And I tend to scrap early in the morning. And it is Easter evening, um, and I had promised her that I would do this tutorial, and I wanted to make sure I got it done um, for her in case she was wanting to work on this project to make sure to get it done for her. So there's the second flap, and so now here is the last one. <clears throat> so I hope everyone had a good Easter. <clears throat> and has enjoyed their weekend. Okay, so this was the last one. Um, I tried to prep as much as I could for this one. The only thing I couldn't do was to cover up your flaps because that one you have to measure each time, otherwise you may get it wrong. Okay, so here are my flaps. These are all done, one, two, and three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue the mats down. Now for your mats, you're gonna need three sheets or six sheets, it's up to you how you do it. I only matted the front side of this. I probably should have matted the back side. If you wanna mat the back side, that's totally fine because when you flip it up, you're gonna see just this plain color anyway. So, excuse me, I would go ahead and mat the back side as well. So what you're gonna do is your mats are gonna be, you're gonna need three sheets or six sheets depending on how many sides you decide to mat. And you're gonna need them at four and seven eighths by four, okay? So either three sheets or six sheets, however you decide to do it, and that's at four and seven eighths by four, okay? So I've gone ahead and cut these as well. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'm only doing just the front side of the flap. And so to adhere this down, I'm just using uh, my ATG gun to do that. Um, just make sure you cover uh, all your bases and your, you know, your sides because you want to make sure that you get a good stick and that it doesn't come up because if people are flipping these tags up and down, it's going to get a lot of wear and tear on them and you don't want them to come up. And I'm actually just um, putting ATG tape on all of them. That way I can go ahead and just stick all of them down. Okay. Here's the last one. And so what you're doing is if I were you to make sure that you, if this is pattern paper, 
um, when you're actually doing it. Just make sure you have this flap tucked up this way and it's folded down that way. That way you can make sure that you have it on the right side. And you just want to center it because this way, with the way these are cut, you're going to have um, like an eighth of an inch basically on each side. And so what I do is um, I just use my bone folder and adhere it down that way. And so this way, here's your mat. And I know it's kind of deceiving because I'm just using a uh, plain color cardstock, but um, when you're using the pattern paper, you just got to make sure that you're cutting it correctly. So let me go ahead and do these last two. Okay. Let's see, this one's a little off. Let's see if I can move it. There we go. Okay, and now for the last one. Sorry if I'm out of frame. I do have my camera at a crazy looking angle. Hmm, I'm at it the wrong side. Should have covered that one up, but you guys will get the drift. <laughs> at least this way you'll see the measurements again just in case. Okay, so now you have your three mats. One, two, and three. Okay, so now what I would do if I were you guys is to go ahead and cut, cut your notch out now. Um, I believe I used the one inch circle punch in order to cut my notch out. Um, you can use the two inch circle punch and it'll give it a bigger notch. Um, the only thing is, is that it's a little harder when you use the two inch in order to gauge where your center is because the pocket isn't overly huge. So when it goes in, it looks like this. So it buckles the sides. So you're not able to gauge exactly where it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and use my one inch because then that way I can kind of gauge it just a little bit better. And also when you are doing this, I would suggest running um, your ATG tape um, in the middle right here and then also along the sides this way just so that you can get complete coverage on this mat okay so I'm just gonna um eyeball it to kind of see sorry I know I'm out of frame but I just need to look really quick and then I just punch and so then there's your pocket okay and so this way you can go ahead and ink your edges and distress it um, to make it work for you however you decide to do that okay so I'm just gonna eyeball it over there so I can see it so there we go, there's the second one, now here is the third one, okay, so you just do it like that, okay, so there's my three. Now, what you're going to do after you've done that, you're going to go back to your base page, <clears throat> and what I suggest you do is you put down the first one, and you put down the last one, do not put down the third one, sorry, I was completely out of frame. You're going to put down your first one here, and then you're going to put down your last one. That way you can gauge what size you need to place um, your mats in order to be able to cover up your hinges, okay? So let me go ahead and do that. Um, also, if you want to, you can go ahead and um, miter your corners just so that you get a, a little bit of a better, um, a cleaner stick <clears throat> when you... Um, adhere this down and I'm just mitering my corners really quick um, and like I said when you put these down you want to use a glue a strong adhesive and I would recommend using um, score tape for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to use my ATG gun and remember when you put this down you're going to glue it you're going to place your glue on this side do not place it on this side because then it'll stick to the your flap you want to stick it on this side here because it's going to flip up like so, okay? So, I'm just adhering, putting some tape on my flap. And so, what you're going to do is you just got to make sure that when you put, the, uh, put it down, you're lining it up um, with the top. So, if it makes it easier for you, turn it around, or should I say turn the page around so that you can get to it. And just try to make it as even as possible and as close to the top as possible, okay? And so, you just adhere that down. And so, when you flip up the page, it's going to flip like this, okay? So, you're going to put your first one down and then I would recommend putting your last one down, all right? Just so that you know where you need to place the one in the middle. If you place the one in the middle first, I mean second, then you're going to, um, your measurements will probably be off. So what you do here is for the third one, 
let's see there we go you're going to line up the bottom of the flap with the bottom of the page and you can leave a little bit of space if you want to i left a very very tiny space and just make sure that your sides are even and then stick it down okay now when it comes to your third one your third one you're going to need to kind of gauge that one what you wanted to do is you want to have even space all the way through okay so let me put this up so you guys can see so you see how this one here it isn't totally even there it looks like it might be a little bit more even so you just are going to kind of have to gauge it to see how you want it to be okay um or should i say how you want it to look it's not going to look completely even only because this flap right here the first flap is really huge so you just kind of kind of gauge it to see how you like it and where you want it to be i like that placement right there now <clears throat> what you can do is you can go ahead and place a mark there so what you do is once you get it where you need it to be take a pen or pencil however you want it to be it's not going to show <clears throat> once you place your um <clears throat> it's not going to show once you place uh, your paper there to cover up your hinges. <clears throat> you won't see this mark, but you can go ahead and place it there. And that's all I did. I just placed a small mark where I wanted it to be. So that way, when I put my adhesive on my flap and I get ready to tape it down, I'll be able to see exactly where I need it to be and I won't be guessing. Okay. <clears throat> and so that's all I'm doing now. I'm just putting it back and making sure my sides measure back up and I'm putting it as close to that mark as possible and sticking it down. And now I'm just making sure it's not crooked. Sorry about that. Okay. So there we go. So there's the three flaps. Okay. So I know this isn't real sturdy on the back, but it just flips up, flips up and then flips up. Okay. So now what you're going to do is, um, for the sake of uh, saving time, I just cut another sheet of paper that was the same size as um, this base page, okay? Um, so what you do is with this base page, I think this one was what? I forget what the size this was. I should have wrote it down. Um, what you're going to do is you're just basically going to measure, Okay. So what you do is you measure, I know this ruler's big, sorry about that. What you do is you just go ahead and measure. So this right here is five and a quarter. And so this right here is four and a quarter. So what you do is you cut the paper that you want to show when you flip these up by those measurements. So that was five and a quarter by seven and a quarter, I believe. Let me measure that again because I think I totally said that wrong. Okay, five and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, so what you do is you just cut this. Uh oh, sorry. Totally shook that camera. Okay, so this is already cut at four and a quarter. So I just need to cut this. I mean, five and a quarter. So I just need to cut this at four and a quarter. Okay, and this one is going to go right here at the bottom and it's going to cover up my hinge. Okay, now you can have it so that you have. A little bit of a um, border if you want let's see what I did in the book okay in the book there's no okay there's a little bit of a border trim right here and it's only on the one side it really isn't on the other side so um, <clears throat> you can go ahead and adhere that down I'm gonna trim this just a little bit because I think it's a little bit it's just a little bit too long okay so then this one goes here and it's gonna go right there and again I'm just using sorry I was completely out of frame and again I'm just using plain paper just for the sake of this tutorial so you put that there then what you do is you measure this piece right here as well and this piece right here is measuring one and three quarters of an inch so I'll trim it just a little bit. So instead of it being one and three quarters, I'll make it say one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'll just trim it to just under. 
one and three quarters. And you can kind of eyeball it just to kind of see. And again, this piece you have to measure. You cannot go ahead and take my measurements for that to make sure it works. And see, I totally screwed it up. <laughs> I should have just followed the, what it was supposed to be. Yeah. Should have totally did that and that way I wouldn't have screwed it up. And so what you do is you just put that in there and then there's your piece that way you're able to cover it up. And now for this piece right here, you just, again, you just measure that piece to see what it's supposed to be. So this piece right here measures one and a quarter. So you just cut it down to size. And then if you need to trim it a little bit after you measure it, after you cut it and you place it against the piece, if you need to trim it just a little bit more, just so it has a little bit of a better fit, then that works too. And so this one works, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and place my adhesive down. So this way, I'll be able to glue the pieces and we'll be done. Okay. So let's glue the big piece first. And again... I recommend you use a strong adhesive. Well, no, I'm sorry. For this one, you can use your ATG tape. That's no problem. Um, this one, the piece is just... Hmm, I cut the wrong piece. That was real nice, Cheryl. All right, let me see where this one goes. This one goes here. Okay, so I cut the wrong piece. Sorry about that. I'll just grab another piece of plain cardstock and cut it. <clears throat> Gotta make sure. Okay, and so all I'm doing is I'm just adhering this down like so. And if you're over just a little bit, just take your scissors and trim. That's all you have to do. That way you can make sure that you don't have anything showing over, okay? So the next piece will go like so. And just so you know, I always screw something up. <laughs> I don't care whether I have directions, I've done it a million times or whatever. I always screw something up in a project and I have to find a way to cover it up or to um, make it so that it was supposed to look like that. So um, it is normal for me to cut something wrong. Normally, truly, I always cut something wrong. If I don't cut something wrong, I'm doing really good. I'm definitely doing really good so let me get another piece of paper let's see let's see if I can cut this correctly all right so I believe this was five and a quarter by four and a quarter let me just make sure real quick five and a quarter four and a quarter yeah so let me just cut that and then we'll be done work out perfect oh I'm truly sorry I did not mean to shake that camera like that let's see Close. Ooh, I would run out of tape. okay I will change that later I'm not gonna make you guys sit through that okay so again all you're doing is you're just adhering it down because you want to cover up your pockets and not your pockets. You want to cover up your hinges because you don't want anyone to be able to see them. Okay. And that's all you do. So then here you go. Here is your flap. And because this one is kind of thin because of the cardstock that I used, I'm just smoothing it down. And so here you go. This is the way it's going to look. And it flips up like so, two, and then three. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to leave me a comment or inbox me, um, however you guys want to do that. Thanks for watching and fans love the scrap. I hope this answers your questions. All right, you guys have a good one. Bye.